Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Today we're going to learn about drone and helicopter flight control systems. And I'm at the headquarters for Helicopter Transport Services Canada. Check out the helicopter to learn about the helicopter bits. Let's get into it. This is the third of my three-part series on the theory of flight. I know you'll want to see the helicopter part of this video. Well, I do anyways. Apparently now I'm completely obsessed with helicopters. But we're going to start with a simpler case, how a drone's flight is controlled. Then we'll talk about helicopters. Same thing, but bigger anyways, right? Actually not. Completely different. And we'll soon see how. For our discussion about drones, we'll use a classic quadcopter as our example. In a quadcopter, we have four horizontally fixed propellers. Each blade on the propeller acts as an airfoil as it passes through the air, bending the airflow downwards and generating lift. One major difference between a wing airfoil and a rotor airfoil is that the pitch or angle on a rotor or propeller is twisted with much more twist on the inside near the hub and less pitch near the ends. They're designed this way to even out the amount of lift. Since the tips have a higher airspeed than the parts near the middle, they are given less pitch. Very cool. Two of the rotors on a quadcopter rotate clockwise and two rotate counterclockwise, positioned diagonally opposite each other. If you didn't have this arrangement, the drone would just rotate wildly under the rotors from the torque. So the counter rotating blades act as an anti-torque control. Since the pitch of the blades on drone propellers is fixed, in order to change the amount of lift generated by each propeller, you need to control the rotational speed of each motor. Now within the typical range of motor speeds, the amount of lift is roughly proportional to the square of the RPM. If you double the RPM, you get four times the lift. The magic of drone maneuvering comes from the fact that the speed of each motor can be individually controlled. Let's go through the three different flight modes that are required to successfully master the sky. Vertical, horizontal, and rotational. The vertical mode is the simplest to understand. If you increase the speed of all the motors by the same amount, the lift from each propeller will be the same and the drone will go straight up. The pilot does this by moving the left joystick forwards and backwards to descend. Simple. Horizontal motion is achieved by tilting the drone in the desired direction. If you tilt the drone to the left, the drone will move to the left. When you tilt the drone, part of the lift force from the propellers is applied to the horizontal plane, and this thrust moves the craft in the opposite direction. Now, the props will also need to go a bit faster to ensure there is still enough force in the vertical direction to maintain your altitude. But how do you get the drone to tilt? Well, the two propellers on one side are simply turned faster than the two on the other side. The imbalance in the lift results in the craft tilting. Fortunately, the flight controller on your drone will figure out how to do all the math here. All the pilot has to do is move the right-hand joystick forwards, backwards, left, or right, and the drone will tilt and move in that direction. That's magic. The third flight mode is horizontal rotation, or yaw. Remember that our props are counter-rotating to prevent our craft from spinning from the torque? Well, we take advantage of that torque to rotate the drone. If you slow down one set of diagonally opposite props, the torque will no longer be balanced and the drone will rotate. Slow down the other props and the drone will rotate in the opposite direction. And that's even more magic. Yaw is controlled by moving the left joystick to the left or right. In my last video, I stated that drones are aerodynamically unstable, like bricks. The way many drones, such as this Mavic 2, can hover steadily and fly in remarkably gusty wind conditions is due to a combination of sensors, 
and a flight controller that figures out what power to give to which motor to compensate for the wind. GPS antennae determine the drone's horizontal position. Altitude is determined from a barometer measuring atmospheric pressure and an electronic compass determines yaw. Any unintended movement in any direction will be quickly compensated for automatically. And all such autonomous moves will use the three movements that we just discussed. Any joystick movements the pilot makes are essentially added to any autonomous moves the drone is making to keep its position. Very cool. But what about the drone's bigger brother, the helicopter? Helicopters have been flying for over 80 years, so surely helicopter flight is automated even more than drones. Actually not. Instead, the entire task of determining the amount to move the various controls to both compensate for wind and actually get where you want to go lies with the pilot. Only recently have there been advances in automating helicopter flight like the automation in drones. For the most part, helicopter flight is purely manual. And even though drones and helicopters share the lift generating, rotating airfoil technology, how they are controlled in flight is remarkably different. Let's check out those same three flight modes, vertical, horizontal, and rotating for helicopters. And we'll use the classic single rotor helicopter as our example. Let's start with a simple vertical flight. Like in a drone, this is achieved by simply increasing the lift of the main rotor. But unlike a drone, the engine speed and the rotor RPM is not increased. Instead, the pitch of the rotor blades is increased, increasing the angle of attack of each blade. More pitch, more lift, and up it goes. The amazing bit of engineering that makes this possible is this thing called the swash plate. By moving up on one of the two main controls called the collective, the pilot causes the lower swash plate to move upwards. This results in the upper swash plate uniformly pushing connector rods up, resulting in the rotors changing their pitch uniformly. And this collective move of the rotors is why the control lever is called the collective. It moves the rotors collectively to change the lift up or down. The collective lever is also connected to the engine, as shown here, to provide increased power to the engine to sustain the RPMs as the pitch increases. A quick aside, if you're in a helicopter, you really want to hear the noise of the engine, for the obvious reason. Oh good, it's still going. But there's a safety feature built into helicopters that will disengage the rotors from the engine in the event of an engine failure. When this happens, the air rushing up through the rotors, which are now loose, will actually cause them to rotate and generate some lift. This is called auto rotation and can be a lifesaver in otherwise catastrophic situations. Auto rotation actually creates enough lift that a skilled pilot can safely land an unpowered helicopter. The record altitude for a safe landing using auto rotation alone, over 40,000 feet, 12 kilometers, set by Jean Boulet in 1972. Yikes. Okay, the next flight mode is the horizontal move. Like the drone, this is executed by tilting the helicopter in the desired direction of movement. But there's only one rotor, at least in most cases, so how is the tilt actually achieved? Well, I'll be honest, when I learned how this worked, I almost ran through the streets yelling, Swash plate! It's the swash plate! Here's the secret. The pilot has another control stick called the cyclic that he or she can move in any direction like a joystick. The result is the lower swash plate is tilted instead of just going up and down. The tilted swash plate causes the blades to change pitch as they rotate around with a higher pitch on one side and a lower pitch, sometimes even slightly negative, on the other side. This happens cyclically as each blade comes around the circle. 
hence the name of the control stick, the cyclic. And since the pitch determines the amount of lift, there's a difference in the lift from one side of the craft to the other. And bingo, that's how the helicopter tilts. One little curiosity, just in case this marvel of engineering isn't enough. Due to a physical phenomena called gyroscopic precession, the higher lift actually needs to be generated 90 degrees ahead of where you want the tilt. That's weird, but that's the way it works. Another little curiosity about horizontal flight is called asymmetrical recirculation. Because the rotor disc is tilted and the helicopter is moving, the turbulence around the blades becomes different at the front edge of motion versus the back edge. Until the helicopter hits a certain speed, called the ETL, effective translational lift, the rotor's forward thrust is relatively poor. But once it breaks through the ETL speed, and that's ETL, not FTL for faster than light, Anyway, once it breaks through that ETL speed between 16 and 24 knots, the helicopter is basically outrunning its own vortex turbulence and becomes much more efficient. I bet you didn't expect to learn that today, did you? What about rotational moves? Well, after getting your head around the cyclic, yaw control will be easy to understand. The rotating blade causes torque, just like in the drone. In some helicopters, there's a second full-size rotor, either separate or right on top of the main rotor. This allows the torque to be managed just like in a drone, but most helicopters have a single main rotor and a small vertically mounted rotor on their tail. This small propeller acts opposite to the torque to keep the craft's yaw steady, much like a rudder on an airplane. And like a rudder, the helicopter pilot has two foot pedals used to adjust the pitch of the tail rotor blades and thus determine the amount of yaw movement. Now, before I finish off, I want to talk about three hazards of flying with rotating airfoils, aside from the obvious risk of losing body parts. The three risks I want to talk about are settling with power, vortex ring state, and dynamic rollover. And all of these can happen with drones, just like helicopters. Settling with power happens when a helicopter pilot descends too quickly when landing. The downward momentum of the aircraft becomes too much for the maximum lift applied via the collective, and disaster can occur. Another problem that can occur when descending too fast is called vortex ring state. No, not that vortex ring state. That's a hairstyle. A vortex ring state occurs when you're descending too quickly through the rotor's own downwash. In the center of the rotor, where there's no blade, air rushes upwards and causes a cascade of vortexes on the blades, starting at the hub. These vortexes cause the blades to stall and provide no lift. Increasing the collective, a natural reaction to attempt to create more lift, actually makes things worse during a vortex ring state. The only safe way out of this state is to slip the craft sideways out of the turbulent air, ideally before you hit the ground. And by the way, vortex ring state is the reason many drones have a lower descent rate than ascend rate to avoid hitting that critical descent speed that creates vortex ring state. That's right, you learned it here. The third helicopter hazard, which can also affect drones, is called dynamic rollover. And I've actually experienced this one. Dynamic rollover occurs when something on the ground catches the skid or landing gear on one side, and sideways motion from, say, a crosswind causes the craft to rotate or tilt on the stuck pivot point at some critical rollover angle which can be as little as five degrees the craft will quickly tip over in my case early in my droning days i was launching from a sloped piece of pretty rough plywood as soon as one side lifted off the entire drone immediately flipped over lesson learned 
Make sure you're taking off and landing on level ground with nothing obstructing the landing gear. So yeah, even though drones and helicopters have vastly different flight controls and flight mechanisms, they share the same physical world and some of the same hazards. Well, there we have it. Drone and helicopter flight control systems. Quite a different world from fixed wing aircraft. I hope you found this video interesting. And if so, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment down below, subscribe to my channel if you don't already do so, and ring that bell if you can hear me for notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.